Welcome to Whips in the Dungeon. We're going to look at what I call variations in, uh, in whip play tonight and how we can create some different variations. If you imagine throwing just a bull whip, a four foot bull whip, you think, well, that's going to feel the same. Uh, it's the same four foot bull whip. But where the variation comes in, is the popper or the cracker. And I'm gonna change the lighting because I want you to be able to see the contrast is one of the things I wanna talk about uh, in your choice of cracker. But what you're seeing right here is a white cracker made out of mason line. It's actually a Lady Sally style cracker. If you don't know what a Lady Sally style cracker is, then uh, there's a video short that you need to watch, okay? but that's a white cracker, okay? Then I'm gonna hold up, these crackers are horsehair crackers made out of blonde or palomino horsehair, okay? This is actually pink fluorescent uh, braided mason line as opposed to twisted mason line. This is white twisted mason line but it hasn't been made into a Sally cracker. It's still just three strand twisted, just like you'd get out of Home Depot. And then here I have a whip maker that sent me a wide variety of crackers. They're all well-made crackers. Um, there's a couple of pink, there's a purple, there's a red, uh, there's a gray, okay. Uh, and then I have uh, green poly, ba uh, poly, polyester style baling twine. I have a whole bunch of different colors of crackers right here. All right, I'm going to turn the lights on. So let me step off real quick. Turn the lights on, come back. So we can talk about what we just looked at. Okay, if you pretend the lighting that you had before was a dimly lit dungeon, think back to which of those crackers is going to be the most visible and the easiest to see in a dim lit dungeon? These really nice crackers that the whip maker sent me, the real tight twisted nylon crackers, those two are kind of orange. Okay, had single cracker traveling at the speed of light in a dim lit dungeon. Uh, they're really nice crackers. There's a red cracker. These are all pretty and colorful. This is a gray cracker, okay. Traditionally, whip makers uh, put a black nylon cracker like that on a whip when it was newly made and sent to a customer. A black cracker in a dim lit dungeon is gonna be impossible to see. These purple crackers, in a dim lit dungeon. These are really nice crackers the whip maker made, but for dungeon play, that's gonna be hard to see. Now, I will say these twisted nylon crackers are gonna be extremely stingy, and uh, they're, they're finished with an overhand knot. They're gonna leave a mark easily, and they're probably gonna feel, if we had a, a whip bottom experience these, at least my whip bottom, Moodstone's going to describe those as like acid on her skin. Okay, she's not in love with that. But from a whip thrower perspective, all these real pretty twisted crackers the whip maker made are not going to be easy to see in a dim lit dungeon. Now, if I'm throwing outdoors and I'm sport cracking or I'm doing outdoor play, that's a different story. However, you have to consider a twisted cracker as opposed to a Lady Sally style cracker. Uh, a twisted cracker is going to be close, easier to mark with. If your whip bottom has asked for marks, enjoys marks, and expects marks, you probably want to play with a twisted cracker with an overhand knot. If your whip catcher uh, as a fetish model and they've got a shoot on Monday or they have to go to the doctor 
uh, or because of their their job, they can't afford to have marks, uh, then you probably want to play with a Lady Sally Cracker, style cracker. Uh, if you're beginning whip thrower and you need a margin for error because you're you're still working on your skill level, uh, you need more mileage with the whip, a Lady Sally style cracker is gonna put you in dun contact dungeon play much quicker than if you're playing with a twisted cracker with a overhand nut. Now, I, I'm a f kind of a cheapskate. Um, you can vary the sensation on the end of your whip by your thoughtful cracker selection, purposeful cracker selection, and knowing the result of your cracker selection. Uh, if I have someone that can't have marks and has negotiated no marks, and I use a, a braided polyester or nylon mason line, knowing that that braided mason line is gonna easily mark, then I just violated what we negotiated. Uh, some people would go so far to say that that was a consent violation. It's certainly um, not appropriate to do that. So think about the way the cracker's constructed, the material the cracker's constructed out of, and play with intentionality. If I intend to mark someone and we negotiated marks, uh, I'm going to probably use a braided mason line, uh, although I prefer white over pink. P fluorescents are great outdoors, and you can see uh, them outdoors. You would think they would be great in a dim lit dungeon, but I actually find white in a dark dungeon is easier to see. Uh, if there's any black light in the dungeon, white is definitely going to pop and show up easily. Uh, but I have better uh, luck with my naked eye following a white cracker as opposed to following a fluorescent cracker. Any of the other colors of the rainbow uh, are a waste for indoor dungeon play, in my humble opinion. So um, experiment around with crackers. Try different materials. See what uh, marks and what doesn't mark for you. Definitely watch the Lady Sally video and uh, learn how to make a Lady Sally cracker and play with it as compared to uh, a traditional twisted cracker with an overhand knot so you can see what the differences are. One of my main successes in pickup dungeon play has been my almost reverent use of a Lady Sally style cracker and much kudos to her for developing that cracker. Uh, she's gonna be visiting us in a couple of months, so hopefully uh, she'll agree to be in one of my videos and you can get to see her again. As always, thanks for watching Whoops in the Dungeon.